With the French Open draw already out for both the men and the women, and the tournament only starting in a day or two's time, let's go have a look at the players that have the most to gain and the most to lose rankings-wise going to this tournament, because of course, for the first time in a long time, not only is the men's world number one ranking at stake, but also the ladies is at stake. Starting on the WTA, the players that have the most to gain this week, points-wise, on Burr, number seven in the world. She lost in the first round last year, so she almost has nothing to lose this week, unless she does lose in the first round, and could make up a lot of points and get back in that top five. Krajikova, who's currently 13 in the world, she also lost in the first round last year, and has a lot of points that she can gain, and maybe, by the end of the two weeks, can be back in the top ten. Maria Sakri, also another player who lost early in the second round last year, currently world number eight. Just like Jabur, if she has a really good week this week, could get back in that top five pretty quick by the end of this tournament. But this is where things get serious. Sabalenka, the current world number two, only made the third round last year and has 1,800 points to gain at this event. And remember, her and Sviantec are battling for that number one spot. And also the number four, Rabakina, has 1,800 points as well from a third round of last year. So some really, really big names there that are kind of playing the French Open with nothing to lose. And if they do have a semi-final, even make the final, they could really rock it back up the rankings, or in Sabalenka's case, take that number one spot. I believe the players on the WTA that have the most to lose, of course, Iga Sviantec. She cannot make any points this week because she's the defending champion, 2,000 points on the line, and that's where that battle between her and Sabalenka comes into play. Last year's finalist, Coco Goff, currently world number six. She has 1,300 points on the line, so if she is unable to get through the first week, her ranking will take a big hit. Kazakina also has a lot of points up for grabs due to the semi-final from last year, number nine in the world currently. And if she doesn't have a good week at the French Open, could fall out of the top 10. Treveson also made the semi-finals last year. She is 26 in the world currently, so she's just trying to hang on to that top 30 spot ahead of Wimbledon, of course, where she'll want to be seated. So she's also got 780 points. And the world number three, Pagula, she made the quarterfinals here last year, has 430 points on the line. So some big changes to the top 10 could happen over the next couple of weeks on the WTA. Have a look at the ATP side of things now with the players that have the most to gain this week at the French Open. Taylor Fritz, lost in the second round last year, number nine in the world currently, could get a big boost if he makes it deep into the tournament, maybe a quarterfinal run, will give him a lot of ranking points. Cam Norrie, number 14 in the world currently, made the third round last year, so he has around 1,900 points to gain if he does go on and have a really good run at the French. But this is where things get really interesting for the top 10, because Medvedev, he made the fourth round last year, and is currently number two in the world, trying to chase Elkares down for that number one spot, and he has 1,800 points that he could make up if he does make it past the quarterfinals and maybe into a semi or even a final. So he could take the top spot by the end of the French Open. Stefanos Tsitsipas also lost in the fourth round last year. Currently world number five. So he also has a lot to gain this week and could get into the top three potentially with a really good run at the French. And Andre Rublev also making the fourth round last year. Currently world number eight. Could get back in that top five with a good run at the French. So a lot of top ten players there that have a lot to gain at the French Open this week. And having a look at the players that have the most to lose. Rafa, of course the defending champion. He's lost those 2,000 points and not going to play, so he can't make those points up. His ranking is 15 in the world currently, and expect that to drop rapidly. Kasper Ruud, number four in the world currently. He has 1,200 points on the line, so if he doesn't have a good week this week or over the next couple of weeks, he could find himself down the bottom of the top 10 when he's been in the top five for the last 12 months. Alexander Zverev, currently number 27 in the world, has a semi-final on the line, 720 points, so he also needs to have a good run this week to avoid dropping outside the top 30 before Wimbledon next month. Alcaraz, the world number one, he's got 360 points from last year's quarterfinal run. So not too many points, but in that battle between himself, Djokovic, and Medvedev, Medvedev's got the most to gain. Alcaraz has more to lose. And Djokovic also, a quarterfinal from last year, number three in the world, has a lot more to lose than someone like a Medvedev. So the top three guys battling it out for the number one spot. Medvedev has the advantage. And remember, with the draw as well, both Alcaraz and Djokovic are in the same half, so they can't both make the final. So there you have it. The players that have the most to gain and the most to lose the French and not to mention, it's the top players that have the most to gain and most to lose. Of course, there's other players outside the top 10 that have, you know, fourth rounds they're going to defend. And, you know, a lot of changes could happen outside the top 10 as well. But let me know down in the comments below. Who's going to be number one by the end of the French Open? Are we going to have new number ones on both sides? Or is it going to be Alcaraz and Sviantec staying at number one for the two weeks? The ranking points are so, so close. And don't forget... Wimbledon is also just around the corner. So once the French Open's done, we might have another change before we get to Wimbledon or maybe post-Wimbledon as well with players like Rabakina who have no points to lose because, of course, she didn't get any points for her win last year. But let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to be world number one by the end of the next two weeks?